let us discuss diffraction conditions. Okay, let me state a theorem. The set of reciprocal lattice vectors G determines the possible X-ray reflections. We'll come into it. Consider, consider a sample of crystal and a beam of X-rays incident on it can be represented as E raised to I K dot R where K is the wave vector of the incident beam. Okay, and this will get diffracted from this crystal and this is the outgoing beam with a wave vector K dash can be represented as E raised to I K dash dot R. Okay, so now the difference in the phase angle, the difference in the phase angle at the point O and at the position R is for incident wave, the difference in phase angle is equal to the equation is 2 pi over lambda into difference in path length. Okay, so the difference in path length, path length is this much, the difference is in path length is this much and we are taking this angle as phi. So the difference in path length is equal to r sin phi. Okay, that is equal to 2 pi over lambda is the wave vector, magnitude of the wave vector k and k r sin phi. Okay, let me redraw this, this portion of this figure here. Consider this is the angle phi, this is the angle phi and this is the wave vector k, the direction of the wave vector k and this is the direction of the position vector r. Okay, position vector of this point and uh, the theta is the angle between the uh, wave vector k and the position vector r. Okay, and look at this figure, this figure. If this angle is theta, this is, this is also theta and this angle is phi and this is 90 degree. Okay, this is the plane wave front. So this angle is 90 degree. So when we are considering this triangle, angle phi plus 90 plus theta equal to 180 degree. Okay, so phi equal to phi equal to 90 minus theta. So the difference in phase angle, so the difference in phase angle is equal to kr sine instead of phi we can uh, substitute 90 minus theta. So kr cos theta, so kr sin 90 minus theta equal to cos theta. So this is kr cos theta and we can write it as k dot r. Okay. And for diffracted wave, the difference in phase angle is equal to 2 pi over lambda dash, where lambda dash is the wavelength of the outgoing beam into difference in path length. Okay, into difference in path length. And if I'm considering this angle, if I'm taking this angle as eta, the path length, difference in path length is this much. For outgoing beam, difference in path length is this much. So that is equal to 2 pi over lambda dash into r sin eta. And that is equal to k dash r sin eta. Okay. And uh, I'm considering, I'm considering, this is the wave vector k dash and this is the position vector of this point r. And the angle between the wave vector k dash outgoing beam, wave, uh, the angle between the wave vector of the outgoing beam, k dash and the position vector r is gamma. Okay. And when I'm considering this triangle, considering this triangle, the total angle will be equal to 180 degree, that is eta plus 90 plus this angle is, this angle is, if this angle is 180, if this angle is gamma, then this is 180 minus gamma and that is equal to 180 degree. Okay, that is eta equal to minus 90 plus gamma or equal to minus 90 minus gamma. Okay, so the difference in phase angle, the difference in phase angle is equal to k dash r sine minus 90. We, we need to substitute the value of eta here. So minus 90 minus theta minus gamma and that is equal to minus k dot r sine 90 minus gamma and that is equal to minus k dot r where, where gamma is the angle between angle between the outgoing uh, the wave vector of the outgoing beam and the position vector r. So the difference in phase angle for diffracted wave is minus k dot r and the difference in phase angle for incident wave is or incident beam is k dot r. Okay. So the total difference in phase angle is equal to k dot r plus minus k dash dot r. Okay, that is equal to k minus k dash dot r. The wave scattered from a small volume element dv 
at the position r has the phase factor e raised to i k minus k dot k minus k dash dot r relative to the waves scattered from a small volume element at the position o or at the origin o okay this is the form of incident being raised to i k dot r and this is the uh, form of scattered um, uh, scattered beam e raised to i k dash dot r but there is a phase factor e raised to i k minus k dash dot r at the position at the volume element dv at the position r relative to the volume element at the position o okay here i'm going to state the mathematical the, the mathematical form of the theorem that is the amplitude the amplitude of the scattered wave is proportional to the integral n of r dv times the dv times the phase factor e raised to i k minus k dash dot r okay and that is equal to we can write it as integral dv n of r where n of r is the number density of electrons dv n of r e raised to minus i delta k dot r where where delta k equal to k dash minus k okay and this is known as scattering vector and we know the number density the number density of electron is equal to sum over g n g e raised to i g dot r we need to substitute this value here then we will get the amplitude is equal to total amplitude of the scattered wave is equal to integral dv sum over g n g e raised to i g dot r e raised to minus i delta k dot r okay and that is equal to sum over g integral pv n g e raised to i g minus delta k dot r okay then the value of the scattered vector delta k is equal to the value of the reciprocal lattice vector g this term will get vanish e raised to i zero then this this is equal to this is equal to 1 so we will get the maximum amplitude f equal to v n g okay this will get uh, this term will uh, will be equal to 1 so we will get the maximum amplitude f equal to v n g when delta k is equal to g okay so this is the diffraction condition this is the one uh, way of writing diffraction condition and in elastic scattering the energy is conserved okay if the elastic scattering happens energy is conserved and we know energy e equal to h nu or we can write it as e equal to h cross omega where omega equal to ck c is the velocity of the light and k is the magnitude of the wave vector if uh, energy is conserved the energy of the incident beam is equal to energy of the scattered beam that is equal to h cross ck equal to h cross ck dash okay that we will get from that we will get k equal to k dash the magnitude of the uh, uh, incident wave vector is equal to the magnitude of the scattered wave vector so we can write k square equal to k dash square and from this equation this is the delta k equal to g delta k means delta k means difference in the wave vector k dash minus k that is equal to g and uh, uh, k plus g equal to from this equation we can write it as k plus g equal to k dash okay let me square it k plus g whole square equal to k dash square and we will get k square k square uh, k square plus g square plus 2 k dot g equal to k dash square and we, from here we know k equal to k dash so this equation we can write as 2 k dot g equal to 2 k dot g plus g square equal to 0 is another form of diffraction condition one form of diffraction condition delta k equal to g when delta k is equal to g the maximum amplitude we will get so we can write the diffraction condition as 2 k dot g equal to 2 k dot g plus g square equal to 0 and let me put it as equation 4 this is equation for 2 k dot g plus g square equal to 0 if i substitute minus g for this g i'll get minus 2 k dot g plus g square is equal to 0 that means 2 k dot g equal to g square this is the angular form of diffraction condition okay and if i take if i take the reciprocal trans the reciprocal lattice vector is g is equal to h b1 plus k b2 plus l b3 where h k l r miller indices defines a plane if i take g is in this form the spacing between parallel planes normal to g the spacing between parallel planes normal to g is d h k l equal to 2 pi over mod g okay to get this equation we need to do another problem i'll do it in another video okay so d h k l equal to 2 pi over g from this equation 5, 
I can define this is 2k dot g equal to g square that means 2kg cos theta cos phi is equal to g square okay so uh, one of the g will get cancelled and this will become 2k cos phi equal to g phi is the angle between k and g okay phi is the angle between the uh, reciprocal lattice vector and the uh, wave vector of incident b okay so look at this plane g is perpendicular to the g is perpendicular to this plane hkl plane g is perpendicular to the hkl plane and a beam a beam of x rays come to this plane and get and will get diffracted okay so this is the angle between this is the angle between phi is the angle between g and k phi is the angle between g and k so this angle this angle is theta this angle is theta and phi equal to phi equal to 90 minus theta phi equal to 90 minus theta so we can substitute here this is the glancing angle theta is the glancing angle so we can substitute here 2k cos instead of phi 90 minus theta equal to 2 pi over dhkl here here mod g is g and uh, uh, that is equal to in this equation in this equation uh, in this equation g equal to 2 pi over dhkl to so 2k cos 90 minus theta equal to 2 pi over dhkl okay and we know k is the wave vector and the magnitude of the wave vector is 2 pi over lambda and uh, this equation becomes this um, cos 90 minus theta is sin theta to 2 pi over lambda sin theta equal to 2 pi over dhkl and that is uh, that implies 2 dhkl sin theta equal to lambda okay 2 dhkl sin theta equal to lambda this is the Bragg's equation okay the spacing between hkl planes is equal to we usually represent this is the equation 1 over under root h square over a square plus k square over b square plus uh, l square over c square where a b and c are lattice parameters okay if you are considering the planes uh, the middle the planes having middle indices h over n and k over n and l over n l over n l over n the spacing between these planes generally we used to write d is is equal to 1 over h, h square over n square a square plus k square over n square b square plus l square over n square n square c square and we will get uh, that is equal to n over under root h square over a square plus k square over b square plus l square over c square okay so from these two equations from these two equations we can write dhkl equal to d over n dhkl equal to d over n and this equation becomes this equation becomes 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda okay 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda or max equation, Bragg's relation, okay.